Assalamu alaikum and hi. Today we are going to discuss Duck Set B Preparation for PSPM 2020-2021 SP025. We'll start with question number one. Let's read the question together. Two point charges Q1 equals to one column and Q2 equals to negative 4 column are placed 2 cm and 3 cm from point A respectively as in figure 1. First, copy the figure 1 and sketch the electric field exerted at point A for its charges. Next, calculate the electric field at point A. And the third one, if a charge negative 4 column is placed at point A, calculate the force exerted on that point. Okay, kita akan jawab soalan yang pertama. So, soalan pertama suruh kita copy figure 1. So, we have to copy figure 1. Kalau tak copy, maka kita akan dapat kosong markah. Sebab the question asks you to copy the figure 1. Okay, sekarang kita akan copy figure 1 dan sketch the electric field exerted at point A for each charge. So, kita akan dapat seperti inilah. Solution dia. So, macam mana kita dapat tu? Okay, yang pertamanya kita mesti lukiskan cas Q1 dan Q2 ni. Kita letakkan garis dot 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 yang menghubungkan mereka. Kemudian kita ada titik A tu mesti diletakkan di atas garis dot dot tersebut. Okay, cas positif pada Q1 ni. Okay, kita tahu bahawa electric field dia mesti out of the charge. So, ini adalah E A1. Dia mesti arah sama eh. Dengan di atas garisan ni. Okey. Kemudian kita tengok pula kepada charge Q2. Charge Q2 negatif. So, negatif E dia into the charge. Okey. So, sebelah sini kita nampak eh. Dia masuk ke dalam charge negatif. So, dekat titik A ini, dia mesti ikut macam ni lah. Sama dengan dekat sini. Okay. So, kita akan dapat vektor EA1 dan vektor EA2. Boleh juga kalau kita nak lukis sebagai E1 dan juga E2. Yang pentingnya dia mestilah ada label. So, untuk permarkahan G1, for EA1 garis dan arrow kalau arrow tak ada kosong D2 for vector EA2 mesti ada garisan dan juga mesti ada arrow so boleh dapat dua markah soalan seterusnya you want to calculate the electric field at point A ok so daripada previous question kita lukis semula Lukisan ini. Okey, secara ringkas. Jangan guna lukisan yang sama seperti jawapan di atas. Eh. Nanti pemeriksa akan keliru dengan pelbagai contohnya. So, kita lukis balik. So, kita tengok dekat sini. E A1 equals to KQ1 over R1 square. Ini kita boleh ambil uh, rumus daripada uh, senarai rumus di hadapan kertas soalan. Okey, kita masukkan nilai. Okey, jangan letakkan negatif pada satu. Okey, satu ni pun memang positif eh. Ha, jangan letakkan tandaan positif atau negatif eh. Okey, arah kita akan tentukan. Kemudian, make sure the distance between Q1 and point A is already convert into meter 0.02. Dan jangan lupa squarekan. Okey, so kita akan dapat jawapan seperti ini. Dan kita boleh tahu arah dia to the right dengan hanya melihat arrow yang kita lukis. Okey, markah yang diberikan hanyalah pada markah gantian sahaja. Jawapan dengan to the right tidak akan dapat markah eh. Sebab itu bukan jawapan akhir. Okey, kemudian kita cari E A2. Kita gunakan rumus yang sama. Masukkan nilai. Tandaan negatif jangan diletakkan pada huruf 4. Eh? Nah, Q2 tu. Q2 ni sepatutnya negatif 4. Kulum kan? Ha, jangan letak negatif eh. Okay so jarak di antara Q2 to A is 3 cm. Make sure you convert into meter. Okay. 
Kemudian kita dapat jawapan seperti ini. Okey, tetapi markah hanya diberikan kepada gantian yang betul sahaja. Okey, jadi kita pun carikan resultant bagi E at point A. So, disebabkan arrow dia sama arah dan dua-dua ke arah kanan, maka kita tambah. So, EA1 tambah EA2. So, ada yang seperti dalam kotak ini dapat satu markah. Kemudian kita gantikan. Kita gantikan. Boleh ambil nilai di atas. Kita gantikan ke bawah. Okey. Dan dapat jawapan. Dan pastikan ada unit. Kita akan dapat markah gantian. Gantian ini mesti sama seperti yang diganti daripada atas. Eh, ha, Nilai daripada atas. Okey. Jawapan akhir dan unit yang betul. Hanya unit. Ini sahaja yang diterima untuk elektrik film. Unit-unit lain tidak akan diterima. Okey, so jangan lupa elektrik film adalah vector quantity must have magnitude and direction. So you will get one mark for the correct direction. Okey, so kita akan dapat gantian jawapan akhir dan unit dan juga jawapan akhir untuk Direction. So kat sini kita ada pemarkah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 markah. Okay so we go to the next question. Okay. For the next question, if we have a charge negative for Coulomb and it is placed at point A, now we want to calculate the force exerted on that point. So just now, we calculate the E, electric field. Okay, beza eh. Sekarang kita nak cari Electrostatic force. Ha, force F. So, this one is F. Force. Okay, yang tadi E. Baca soalan tu kena betul eh. Okay. Dekat titik ini. Titik ini sepatutnya. Kita ada letakkan cas negatif 4 kolom. Dekat titik ini. So, ini adalah sebenarnya adalah test cas. Cas yang baru diletakkan eh. Okay. So, macam mana kita nak kira? Kita gunakan rumus, tapi rumus ini telah ada dalam senarai rumus, maka tidak dapat markah untuk rumus. Okey, kemudian kita gantikan. Ha, seperti biasa, negatif ini jangan masukkan kerana kita akan tentukan arahnya kemudian. E mana nak ambil? E kita ambil E resultant dalam soalan yang kedua tadi. Okey. Yang ini dapat markah gantian dengan betul. Eh? Ganti 4. Letak negatif 4, salah. Okey, gantian betul. Lepas tu, kita kira pakai calculator. Okey, so jawapan akhir bersama unit 1 markah. Okey, arah. So, arahnya adalah direction to the left. Macam mana kita tahu? Cuba lihat eh. Okey, force. Kita cuba check betul tak? Force. Kalau same sign, contohnya negatif dengan negatif, dia akan jadi attractive force. Ha, ni force eh. Dia ada attractive force dan juga repulsive force eh. So, dia attract together. So, kalau F positif dengan negatif, dia akan repel to each other. So, dekat sini, charge negatif berminat tak pada Q1? Ya, berminat. Lukis pada garisan ni. Eh. Dia mesti pada atas garisan. Okey, charge Q2. So, Q0 ataupun test charge tidak berminat kepada charge yang sama. Maka, kita dapat macam ni lah. So, kita dapat satu daripada F1 dan satu lagi kita dapat daripada F2. So, kita lihat dekat sini, kita dapatlah direction dia adalah to the left. So, same sign attract, kita namakan attractive force dan opposite sign repel. Repel, kita namakan dia sebagai repulsive force. Ada cara senang lagi nak ingat? Ya, kita boleh lihat di sini. Jika anda masih ingat, kita belajar dulu. If the test, test charge is positive, direction F dengan E eh, akan jadi sama. If the test charge is negative, direction F dengan E tidak akan sama. So, direction E kita tadi adalah to the right. Since the test charge now is negative, negative sini, maka F kita akan jadi opposite direction. Maka kita dapat direction kita to the left. E just now to the right eh. E tadi to the right. So F kita adalah to the left. 
Okay, that's all for question number one. Thank you and good luck. Okay, so for question number two, set B. So, calculate the voltage of a battery connected to a parallel plate capacitor. So, given the area, area of the capacitor to cm square. So, make sure you change the unit. So, 2 centi, centi negative. 3, but we have prefix here. So, negative 3 and negative 2 times. Um, 2. So, here is negative 4 meter square. Lagi, given is the separation of the uh, plate, which is here is 3 meter. Meter is 10 the power a milli negative 3. And lagi satu given is the, if the charge store on the plate is 4 picocoulomb. So, dia bagi Q. Q is 4 pico, So, which is 4 times 10 the power of pico. Negative 12. So, question. Here we are going to find the. Calculate the voltage. Kita nak cari V dia. So, first uh, Q equal to CV. We are going to find Q. But now, we didn't know the value of C. So, maksudnya kita kena cari C dia dulu. So, C equal to epsilon not A over D. So, all the information given in the question. So, we just calculate lah. Substitute um, permittivity 8.85 exponent 12 time with the area area in meter square so 2 exponent negative 4 over dd given is 3 exponent negative 3 so sini kita dapat capacitor is 5.9 exponent negative 13 farad ok so baru dapat c Tapi kita nak cari Q. Q equal to CV. C is 5.9 exponent negative 13. So, time dengan mm, V. V, V, V. Oh, salah kita nak cari V dia kan. Time dengan V. So, Q. Q is 4 pico. 4 exponent negative 12. So, V kita equal to. 4 exponent 12 negative negative 12 over 5.9 exponent negative 13 so kita dapat V dia 6.78 volt ok so so dekat mana markah dia 3 mark for question number 2 so, kita ada mark dekat sini. Substitution G1. Next, kita ada mark dekat sini. Also, G1. And the last one is JU1. Jawapan with unit. Okay. So, that's all for question number 2. 3A. Figure 2 shows the arrangement of 5 equal resistors in a circuit. So, one calculate the voltage across point B and C. So, V3, 4, V cross resistor 3 and resistor 4 is equal to V2, V cross resistor 2. So, V3, 4 equals to I3, 4 times R4, R3, 4 and V2 equals to I2 R2. So we substitute the value here. So R34 equals to 3 plus 3. And R2 is 3 ohm. And I2 is 2 ampere. So we can determine I34. So we get I34 equals to 1 ampere. So, to calculate V cross B and point B and C, so mean that we calculate V4. 
So VBC equals to V4 equals to I34 times R4. So we substitute the value I34 equals to 1 ampere and R4 equals to 3 ohm. So we can determine VBC. So you can so you get VBC equals to 3 volt. So mean that the voltage across point B and C equals to 3 volt. To calculate power dissipated in R5. So we can use equation P5 equals to I5 squared times R5. I5 equals to I2 plus I34. So we can substitute here. So I5 equals to I2 2 ampere plus I34 1 ampere squared times R5 3 ohm. So you can determine P5 equals to 27 watt. So it means that the power dissipated in R5 is equals to 27 watt. 3B1 Given that R1 equals to 6 ohm and R2 equals to 9 ohm is applied to power supply of 6 volt with an internal resistance of 0 0.5 ohm. So calculate the emitter region. So first step you can determine R12. R12, R1 and R and R2 are connected in parallel. So we can use equation R12 equals to 1 divided by 1 per R1 plus 1 per R2. Substitute the value so you can determine R12 equals to 3.6 ohm. Then we use equation EMF equals to I times R external plus R internal. So we substitute the value e, EMF here equals to 6 volt, R12 equals to 3.6 ohm and internal resistance small r equals to 0 0.5 ohm. So you can determine I. So you get I equals to 1.46 ampere. So it means that the emitter within is equal to 1.46 ampere. B2 the 3 here is potentiometer. EMF here 5 volt. And then the EMF of the cell X here equals to 2 volt. EMF X here 2 volt. And the wire AB is 100 cm long and its resistance of wire AB equals to 3 ohm. So calculate the resistance of the wire from A to B. So we can use equation here EMFX divide EMF equals to RAP divide by RAB. So you just substitute the value EMF X equals to 2 volt, EMF equals to 5 volt, and RAB equals to 3 ohm. So you can determine RAP. So RAP equals to 1.2 ohm. So it means that the resistance of the wire from A to P equals to 1.2 ohm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. So today we will continue question number 4 DAQ set B. Okay, question number 4 stands for chapter 5 electromagnetic induction and the contribution marks is 10 marks. Okay, look at for number 4A. A circular loop of wire with radius 0.055 meter 
is placed in a uniform region of magnetic field as shown in figure 5. The magnetic field is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.65 tesla per second. Calculate the induced EMF in the loop. Okay, so first of all, as usual, list out the information given. We have the radius of the loop 0 0.055 meter. And we have the decreasing. Okay, decreasing of the rate magnetic field 0 0.65 tesla per second. Therefore, magnetic field is B, right? Okay, so the rate means over with time. Therefore, dB over dt. You are given the dB over dt, the rate of magnetic field. Okay, equal to because it was decreasing. So when decreasing, the value is negative 0 0.65. Okay, be careful with the words of decreasing. Okay, why? Because they are decreasing. Maksudnya, your dB is B final minus with B initial. Okay. And your B final is less than B initial because decreasing, right? Okay, that, that's why it is in negative sign. And you want to determine the induced EMF. Okay, uh, induced EMF. Okay. So, based on the information given, you have the dB over dt, you have the radius of circular loop, and we want to determine the induced EMF. Okay, therefore, the equation to solve this problem is induced EMF equals to negative N D phi over dt okay the phi over dt and your phi is b a cos theta we need to change into this type of equation because you have the change of magnetic field and the loop doesn't rotate and the magnetic field is decreasing while radius or area Constant. Okay. Then kita substitute lah. Okay. So this one is negative n, and since a and cos theta is a constant, but you just have the change of magnetic field due to the the time. So become like this lah. Okay. Now we check all the information given. We have. Okay. We have the dB over dt. Okay. You have the dB over dt. And the angle is zero, okay, zero degree, because it plays perpendicularly, right? Okay, it plays perpendicularly, so the angle is zero. The plane, plane of circular loop, plays perpendicular, so the angle between B and A is zero. Okay, now the number of turn is one, but you don't have the value of area. Okay, you don't have the value of area. But you can determine the area by using the equation of area, pi r squared. So, just substitute into this equation negative. Your n is 1. And then, this is the pi. And your r is 0 0.055 squared. Okay, and cos zero degrees and the db is negative 0 0.65 okay so you can get the value of use emf and the value is 
become as a positive, eh? This one is negative, negative. You got the positive sign. So positive 6.177 times 10 to the power of negative 3 volt. Okay, and settle. Okay, therefore, the answer is. Six point one seven seven times ten to the power of negative three volt. Okay, done. I you can write here lah. Area is pi r square. Okay, next we go through for the next question. Number four b. Okay, number four b. A conducting. Okay, a conducting rod AB. Okay, AB makes a contact with metal rails ACDB. Okay, ACDB as shown in figure 6. They are placed in a uniform magnetic field of 1.50 Tesla, which is perpendicular to the planes. Okay, perpendicularly means your angle is Z, 0. Okay. Okay, so we list out the information given. You have the magnetic field which is constant 1.50 Tesla. <clears throat> and we have the length of the rod. Okay, the length of the rod 40.0 cm but changed into meter. So we can get 0 0.40 meter. Okay, the first Roman, you want to find the magnitude of induced EMF in the rod when it is moving toward the right with a speed 8.00 cm per second. So we have the V, okay, we have this V, 8.00 cm per second. So please, please, please change into SI unit. Okay, so SI unit 0.0. .0. 8 meter per second or you can write it like this 8 times with then the power of negative 2 meter per second also accepted okay and we want to determine the induced emf and this one is the moving rod okay moving rod okay your rod is moving therefore the basic equation is induced EMF equals to B L V sine theta. And we have the B, we have the L, we have the V. So substitute into general equation 1.50, the magnetic field strength, and then the length is 0 0.40, and the V is 8 times 10 to the power of negative 2 or 0 0.08 and the angle is sine 90 degrees okay this angle okay this angle is angle between b and v and right now if you refer to the diagram your b directed into the pitch okay directed into the pitch and the v is to the right so they are placed secara perpendicular okay that's why the angle is 90 lah okay then you can get the answer as 0.048 volt okay settle simple okay second roman okay second roman is Direction of induced current. Okay, induced current in the rod. Okay, so to identify the direction of induced current in the rod, you need to use your Fleming right hand rule. Okay, so by using the Fleming 
right hand roll okay, Fleming right hand roll okay which is your thumb finger okay your thumb finger refer to the okay, it is like this lah Huh. Okay. Your thumb finger represent the V. Okay. Your second finger. Okay. Second finger U. This one is direction of the B. And this one is direction of induced current. So just use your right hand Fleming rule. Okay. Your B, you shoot into the pitch. Okay, into the pitch. And the speed, V. Okay, the speed is directed to the right. So, twist your hand. And you can get the value of induced current through the rod. Which is from B to A. Okay, B to A. So, this is the direction of induced current. So, that's your induced current. Okay. So, you can write your answer as... From B to A or upward. Both are accepted. Okay, settle for question B. Now, the last question C. Okay, C. An airfield solenoid of length 40.0 cm has a radius of 5 cm. The energy stored, okay, the energy stored in the solenoid is 0 0.375 Joule when the current is 11.0 Ampere. Calculate the number of turns of the solenoid. Okay, so as usual, list out the information given. You have the L40.0 cm, so please change into meter. 0 0.4 meter and you have the radius 5.00 centimeter or it is 0 0.05 meter it can be both okay 5 exponent negative 2 or 0 0.05 it's up to you and we have the energy store. The symbol is U, eh? And the energy given is 0 0.375 Joule. And the last one, you have the current flow through the solenoid is 11.0 Ampere. And now, we want to determine the number of tens. Okay. So, the first idea is, because it is occur one coil. Okay, one solenoid. So, we have the self-inductance. Okay, so based on the information given, you can use U equals to 1 over 2L I square. Okay. Then, substitute your U, 0 0.375 equal to 1 over 2. L is unknown. Okay, L is unknown and I is 11.0 square. Therefore, you can have the L. Okay, so, 0 0.375 times with 2 over 11 square. And the value for self-inductance is 6.198. Exponent negative 3 Henry. Okay, after that, okay, after that, you can use L equals to mu naught n square a over with the length. Okay, because we want to find the n, right? Okay, so you have the mu naught, you have the area and the, the length. So just substitute into the equation. Okay, but first of all, the area, okay, our area is equal to pi r square. Because you are given with the radius of solenoid okay then substitute into your equation our l is 
9, 8 times 10 power of negative 3. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 power of negative 7. And number of turns is unknown. Okay, n square. And the area is pi. R square is 0 0.5. Square over with the length 0 0.4 meter. Okay, so from this one, you can get the answer for number of tens. Okay, so N, use your scientific calculator, huh? okay, times with 0 0.4 over. Okay, and don't forget to set it because NU is square. Okay, therefore the answer is 501.194 tons. Okay, or you can use it and it's approximately 501 tons. Okay, so that's the answer. That's it for number four. Thank you. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And hi everyone. So this is topic six, alternating current, 10 marks. Question A. An AC series circuit containing a capacitor and resistor is found to have a current of amplitude 0.5 ampere for a source voltage of amplitude 10 volt and an angular frequency 200 radian per second. Total resistance in this circuit is 15 ohm. What are the power factor and the phase angle for the circuit? And number two, can you determine whether the current leads or lacks the source voltage? Explain. So this is an RC. RC circuit given that amplitude I naught omega and also V naught so we need to find the power factor so what is the formula for power factor power factor is equals to cos phi equals to R over Z so that we need to find Z first the impedance from the equation V naught over I naught. So substitute 15 over 20. We get the power factor 0 0.75. And for the phase angle, we just shift cos 0 0.75. And we will get 41.41 degree. So one mark for Z. The answer for power factor and also the answer for phase angle. What is the unit for phase angle? It is degree. So which one is leading? Okay, next question is which one is leading? So we know that we have an RC circuit. We will see that the impedance will be on the fourth quadrant. So transfer to phase diagram I and V. We will see that I is leading V by 41.41 degree. So, D1 and J1. Question B. 
and electric drill is marked 250 V RMS and 625 watt. Calculate the RMS current and peak current in the wire connecting the drill to the mains. And then sketch a graph of power drawn by the drill over one cycle of the current. Mark on the graph the values of peak power and average power. So RMS current from P equals to IV. We can get the value of IRMS by substitute the value of P625 divided by 250 so the IRMS will be equal to 2.5 ampere while for the peak current I not is equal to IRMS set to So your I node is equal to 3.54 ampere. So it will be G J U1 and J U1. Okay, next we need to sketch a graph of P against T. So we know that our P average is 6 to 5 watt and the P naught is 2 times P average. Where it is equivalent to 1250 watt. So label the axis of P against T and P naught and also P average okay so correct shape D1 and then two cycles okay we have one two so this is D1 and then pick and average power mark so this is your P not and this will be your P average so D1 so we get 3 marks here ok that's all for today thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. We're going to discuss the solutions to question 6, which is on chapter 7 Geological Optics for DAQ set B. Alright, let's get started. Question 6A. Let's read the question first. An object is placed 15 centimeters, 15 centimeters, this is new, from a convex mirror with a radius of 10 cm. Sketch a label ray diagram to show the formation of the image. Okay, so we have right here a convex mirror. So let's draw that first. Convex mirror, how does it look like? Okay, it looks something like this. Is bulging towards uh, the left direction and we're gonna have a horizontal line going through the mirror going across okay so this is a sketching so you don't have to be perfect perfectly accurate uh, so u is 15 cm Okay, let's see the radius is around here. This is radius is convex mirror, so my center will be somewhere around here. This is my C, 10 cm, and half of half of R is F. So that will be my focal point. 
my object is somewhere around here. Okay, it's in front of the mirror. Because if you want the image of something, you need to put the image in front of the mirror instead of behind it. Okay, uh, so how many lines do we need to draw in order to obtain an image? The answer is two. Okay, the first line is, uh, uh, I, uh, I like to memorize the acronym P, F, and C. Okay, what's the meaning behind this? Acronym P meaning parallel. So I'm gonna start with a parallel line. Parallel with what? Parallel with your horizontal line right here. So this is parallel. Oh, we need an arrow to show that this is like going through something, going across something. So this is my object. Label it as O. P parallel then goes to the focal point so since this is behind the mirror let me show that by drawing a dotted line and continue uh, please use use a ruler yeah? continue that line is going to be reflected at the mirror at, at this point right here so see from the object to the center. Draw a straight line from the object to the center. So this is my straight line. Sorry. Let's do a better one. And with a different color maybe. C. Okay. It's going back and forth along the same line. So it's going in, then it's going to be reflected. So this intersection of those two lines will give you the position of your image. So my image is here. Let's label it as I. Okay, to get full marks for this kind of equation, remember to put down your arrows to show the direction of uh, the light rays. And I think two lines are enough. Okay, to get an image. Alright, uh, uh, let's proceed with the second part of the equation. For equation 6b, uh, you are asked to determine position of the image, magnification, height, and state three characteristics of the image formed. Okay, what are the information that we are given with? Uh, object 3cm high. So he should not 3 cm. It is placed 20 cm from a convex mirror, so that would be U. Focal length 8 cm. Okay, seeing that this is convex mirror, I should put a negative sign in front of that value. For the position of the image, uh, this question one, sorry, okay. Position of the image will be determined from the value of V. So 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. 1 over negative 8 is equal to 1 over 20 plus 1 over V. Hence, 1 over V is negative 1 over 8 minus 1 over 20. Find the reciprocal. And your answer should be equal to negative 5.7 cm. What can we infer from the answer? It means that your image is 5.7 cm behind the mirror. Okay, number two, magnification of the mirror M could be calculated from negative V of U or the other formula that we have is hi over h0 okay, but since the values that we have right now at this point are just v and u so let's use the first equation so m is equal to negative take the answer from number one negative 5.7 divided by u 20 the answer is 0.2 Okay, it's a positive value. 
So m is equal to 0 0.285. From that, we're going to determine the height of the image. So number 3 will be finding the height. So m is equal to hi over hi naught. What's the value of m? m is 0 0.285. Hi i is the unknown. hi naught is 3. Therefore, hi i is 0 0.285 times 3. And that's equal to 0 0.855 cm. Okay. This is also a positive value because uh, the image produced by a convex mirror is always virtual, upright, and diminished. It's going to be smaller than the object. Okay, number four. Number four, state three characteristics of the image. Okay, remember that M. The answer that we obtained from number 2 is equal to 0 0.285. Okay. So we have this hidden positive sign in front of it. Um, you can see many things about an image produced by a mirror just by looking at this value of M. So positive sign means your image is upright. And I think we already know that upright images are virtual. Okay, upright images are always virtual or virtual images are upright. Okay, that goes to that goes both ways. Um, for size, size of the object is 3 cm, size of the image is 0 0.855 cm, meaning your image is quite small compared to the object. So we can say that the image is diminished. Gets reduced in size or smaller than the object. Okay, any sentence that convey the meaning of the image being smaller than the object. Okay, so that's done for 6b. Let's carry on with the last part of the equation C, where we have an object placed in front of concave mirror with a 20 cm radius of curvature. So R 20 cm. What should I put uh, in front of this value? Positive or negative sign? I should refer to this because this is a concave mirror, so it's positive. Okay, a real image, a real image twice the size of the object is formed. So whenever size is mentioned, you can refer to the magnification value. So it's telling us that M is equal to 2 because it's twice the size of the object. But because the image is real, it means that it must be inverted. Okay, as a result, negative sign has to be put in front of this value. So M is equal to negative 2. At what distance is the object from the mirror? Okay. Um, we are trying to determine u. Okay, at what distance is the object? Okay, where should we put the object in front of the mirror? Okay, so m is equal to negative two. Um, what about r? R is twenty cm. Okay, so m is equal to negative v over u. We have two unknowns. So you have to have two equations. One is coming from the value of m. So negative 2 is equal to negative v over u. Cancel the negative signs. Um, so v is equal to 2u. Okay, let's apply mirror equation. 1 over f, 1 over u, plus 1 over v. Okay, how are F and R related? R is 20 cm. F is R over 2. So R over 2 is 15 cm. 30, I'm sorry. 
is 20. So 20 divided by 2 is 10 cm. So 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over u. V is 2u. So 1 over 2u. Just solve the fractions. Times 2. Times this by 2. So 2 plus 1 over 2u. 1 over 10. Uh, some cross multiplication must be done and in the end you should end up with the answer which is going to be 15 cm okay so bring this over here then 3 times 10 is 30 divided by 2 15 so u is equal to 15 cm okay so that's it that's uh the whole explanation for question 6 from the AQZ B. Thank you. Question number 7 is about physical optics which contributes 10 marks. 7A1, a sodium line of wavelength 580 and M falls on two narrow slits. The distance between the third dark fringe to the central bright on a screen is 3.5 mm. Distance between slits and screen is 160 cm. What is the spacing between the two slits? Okay, here you are given lambda. Lambda equals to 580 nm. Okay, and then over here, 3.5 mm, actually this is YM. And then, 160cm here is D, capital letter D, 160cm, convert to SI unit, 1.60m. And the distance, what is the spacing between the two slates here is small letter D. So for this question, I suggest to you to sketch the interference pattern produced from two narrow slits. Okay, over here is at the center. Center bright, M equal to zero. After that, this is dark. Next is bright. So now, I'm going to label M or the number for bright only. Okay, the next fringe is dark, next fringe is bright, M equals to 2, dark and bright, M equals to 3. 3.5 millimeters here is the distance from the center bright fringe to the third dark fringe. First, second, third. So, I label here as Y M. Okay, so, look at the order number. What is the value of M for this case? So, since we discussed about dark, so the M here is M equals to 2. So, Y 2. Alright, so what is the formula for Y M for dark fringe? The formula is given by Y M equals to M plus half lambda D over D. In this question, we are going to calculate D, the spacing between the two slits. So, YM here, the value given as 3.5. 3.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 equals to, okay, M here, you have to take 2, 2 plus 1 over 2, lambda, 580 times 10 to the power of negative 9 and d 1.60 divided by d. So when you calculate, you get d equals to 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter. So for this question, you are given 3 marks. Okay, how to get 3 marks? For one mark, you choose M equals to 2. That is the mark for concept K1. The next mark is the 
substitution. So J one. Lastly is the final answer. If correct, you need J U one. For question seven two, solar cells are an example of anti-reflective coatings. Let a silicon solar cell N equals to three point four five coated with a layer of silicon dioxide. N equals to one point four five. Calculate the minimum coating thickness that will minimize the reflection of the light with wavelength six five zero nm. Okay, so this question is about thin film interference. So I suggest to you we sketch the diagram. Here is the thin film. So the thin film is a layer of silicon dioxide with n equals to one point four five. The first medium normally is air, so I write n one equals to one. And the next medium here is the solar cell, n two with refractive index three point four five. Okay, let us sketch the incident light. This one as incident light. I sketch the wave for this incident light. After that, after reaching the surface, the light will reflect. So this is the first reflected light. Since this N for silicon or the thin film is denser or higher than N one, so there is phase change. Now I will sketch the shape of the wave when this light experiences phase change. Okay, next. After that, this light will pass through in this thin film again reflect. This one becomes second reflected light. So since N2 greater than N, so there is phase change. So I sketch again the shape of the wave. Now we compare between these two reflected light. In this case, both are in phase. As we know, we have a technique to remember what formula that we can use. So the technique is called I C method. I represent phase. C represent constructive. And M means M lambda. So in this case, since both reflected light are in phase, so the condition to get constructive is two and t equals to M lambda. And for destructive, the condition is two and t equals M plus half lambda. So, which equation that we are going to use for this question? Here, you are given that solar cell example of anti-reflective coatings, meaning that this is for destructive. So, for destructive condition, we will use this formula: two and t equals to m plus half lambda. Substitute all the values that we know. And here is N for film, one point four five. T equals to M. So M here we have to take as zero. Why M equal to zero? Because the question asks us minimum coating thickness. Plus one over two lambda is six five zero times ten times ten to the power negative nine. So we calculate, we get t equals to one point one two times ten to the power of negative seven meters. How about the mark? Okay, so for this question, you are given four marks. How to get four marks? Number one, we choose destructive formula as k one. So twenty equals to m plus half lambda. The next mark is for the value for m here we take m equal to zero. Give k one. Next is j one, and lastly j u one.
for question 7b, the second maximum in the diffraction pattern of a 0.12 mm white slit occurs at 0.48 cm from the central bright fringe and the screen is placed 50 cm away from the slit. What is the wavelength of the light? Okay, so in this case, actually this is about single slit. 0.12 mm is the width of slit. 0.48 cm here is Y M and 50 cm here is capital letter D. 50 cm convert to meter, we get 0.5 meters. And we are going to calculate wavelength of flight lambda. Again, I suggest to you sketch the interference, sorry, sketch the diffraction pattern for single slit. At the center here is bright. Shaded area here represents bright. The next fringe is dark. Continuous with bright. Dark bright dark bright now i'm going to label the order number the order number for single seed is for dark so m equals to one m equals to two and m equals to three here is the central bright fringe The value for YM, that is 0 0.48, is from the second maximum to the central bright fringe. Second maximum means second bright. First bright, second bright. So here is the YM, where the value for YM is 0 0.48 cm. Okay, for this question, since we discussed about the second maximum mean for bright fringes, so the formula for YM is YM equals to M plus half lambda D over A. Substitute all the values that you know. YM is 0 0.48 times 10 to the power negative 2 equals okay m here is order number look at the diagram the value of m should be taken as 2 2 plus half lambda we want to find our lambda and d 0 0.5 divide by a the size out of slit 0 0.12 times 10 to the power of negative 3 after we calculate, you will get lambda equals to 4.61 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. How about the mark for this question? There are only two marks. Number one for G1, number two for JU1. Okay, now we get question number 8 for set B. So, given the stopping potential for the frequency 1.61 exponent 15 Hz is shown on a metal is 3 volt. So, stopping potential given is 3 volt with the frequency of the EM radiation. 1.61 exponent 14 hertz. So question A, we are going to find the work function of the metal. So work function is W not. Kita nak cari W not. So uh, before that, the equation for the photoelectric effect E equal to W not plus K max. So, meaning W0 equal to E minus K max 
So E, we can get the value of E by calculate uh, the value of E. E equal to HL. So K max theta is E V S. So pun kita boleh kira. So kita punya H 6.63 exponent negative 34 with frequency 1.61 exponent hmm, 15. Minus dengan uh, electron 1.6 exponent negative 19 times with V stopping potential kita. Hmm, stopping potential kita berapa tu? 3V. So, sini kita dapat. So, W equal to 5.87 exponent negative 19 Joule. Okay, that one for the work function of the metal. Next question. Kita nak calculate maximum speed. So, maximum speed is B. Okay, so macam mana dapat ni? So, we can get it from the value of K max which is the K max equal to E V S and also equal to half M V square. So, kita dah ada uh, Vs. Ve kita 1.6 exponent negative 19 times with 3 equal to 1.1 over 2. Mass of the electron 1 and 9.11 exponent negative 31 times with V square. So, kita akan dapat V dia straightforward kat sini. So, our V is 1.03 exponent 6 meter per second. Okay. So, that's all for question number 8. Kita tengok markah dia. So, 5 mark untuk question uh, chapter 8 ni. So, mark dia, question number 8 ni 5 mark. So, mark dia dekat. So, sini kita ada substitution. Substitution G1. Lepas tu, uh, W. Eh, sorry ni. Um, GU1. Jawapan with unit. Next, for question B. Dia tanya, what is the maximum speed? So, kita tanya V. So, first kita ada sini K1 next kita ada G1 and last is GU1 so total is 5 marks for question number 8 ok guys so let's let's continue by question number 9 so what is the question alright so the question now is an electron has a de Broglie wavelength of 2.8 exponent negative 10 meters determine the kinetic energy of the electron okay so by giving you the lambda or wavelength here they ask you to calculate the kinetic energy and the mark given is 3 only okay so it's quite, quite simple calculation lah. all right so by using the de Broglie relationship which is momentum equals to Planck constant over de Broglie wavelength okay so momentum equals to mv all right so remember m is a uh, constant which is the mass of electron okay, given already we just copy the values from the front page all right speed okay we need to find it first here because the kinetic energy is half mv squared isn't it so we need to find v h just a plan constant also constant given at the front page okay just copy it and lambda given here substitute into the equation then you may calculate the speed okay uh, so by getting the speed then by using the equation of kinetic energy which is half mv squared uh, something is wrong here something is missing what is it uh, okay so k equals to i uh, k equals to okay and then substitute all the values again m representing the mass of electron also constant here i uh, just copy it from the front page and given also eh? and then the speed given now is uh, getting before is 2.6 exponent 6 substitute into this equation 
All right, then you may get the answers, which is k equals to 3.08x on a negative 18 joule. Or maybe by using this equation directly, you may get the value of k. Okay, I uh, should be simpler than this, lah, using this equation. Okay, uh, so this is the answer for question number 9. And then for number 10, what do we have now? Okay. There are two different questions for number 10, which is 10A and 10B. So let's discuss one by one. Okay, we just start by question number 10A. Alright, so an X element isotope with a half-life of 48 days decays into Y. X decays into Y. Okay, determine the time required for 60% of X element isotope to become Y nucleus. 60% of X decays into Y. Okay, so what is the hidden info do we have here is, okay, first, eh, the first info given out is the half life, which is T half equals to 48 days eh, for X. And then, now this is the reaction where X decays producing Y and energy. All right. So now the, the according to the info given, determine the time required for 60% of X element decay into Y. 60% means that the nucleus of Y now is 60%. What does it mean? Ah, the remaining one for X is 40%. And because 60% of X decays already into Y, so the balance one is 40% eh, of X. Uh, so initially x is 100 uh, percent so this is the values of x and eh? nuclei uh, where the initial nuclei is 100 percent and finally the remaining nuclei is 40 percent because 60 percent already decays into y okay so for this first we just calculate the decay constant where decay constant equals to ln ln 2 over t half where t half given is 48 days so that you will get uh, in per day unit okay by getting the decay constant then by using the equation of n equals to n not exponent negative lambda t so this is our remaining nuclei this is the initial nuclei this is our decay constant eh? lambda represented the decay constant and t is the time interval eh? between initial and final okay so we just updated the values where Initially, the values is 100%. 100 over 100 equals to 1. And finally, the remaining one is 40%. So, 40 over 100 giving you 0 0.4. Okay? Alright, so this is lambda calculated before. Uh, substitute into this equation, giving you this. Uh, before that, we just arrange the equation for that. By rearranging the equations, you will get this. Alright? Then... Uh, by having ln for both sides, you will get lambda t equals to 0 0.916. Okay, lambda equals to ln 2 over 48. Uh, okay, we just substitute the equation of lambda calculated before into this equation. So that you will get t which is equals to 63.45 days. Okay, so this is the way how do we answer the question right, for 10A. Next, we just go for 10B. So, what is the question? Alright, so a sample okay, of this mode contains 2 times 10 to the power of 9 nuclei. Given the half-life of this mode is 2.14 minutes, calculate the initial activity in decades per second. And the number of nuclei remaining in 42.8 seconds. Okay, so what do we have? Alright, so this is our initial nuclei, which is N0. And this is N0. Alright, and this is our half-life, which is T half. So they ask you to calculate the initial activity in decades per second. They ask you to find a naught. Okay, also the number of nuclei remaining. Yeah. N. 
Okay, and by giving you t the time. Okay, so how to answer the question? All right. First, eh, for the first part, okay, by using the equation of dk constant, which is long two over t half. Okay, t half given is two point one four minutes, so I just convert it to be in second. Okay, then you will get dk constant or lambda, which is in term of first second unit. Okay. Uh, so by getting uh, lambda here or dk constant, then by using the equation of a not equal to lambda n not, okay, lambda calculated just now, and not given already, so that we may calculate a not, which is the initial activity. Alright, uh, so we just substitute the values of lambda getting before, also n not given, then you will get the answer, which is in dk per second. See. Because the question asks you to find the initial activity to be in dk per second. That is why we need to convert the unit to be in second here. And from minute to be in second. Okay, that is B1. And then for the second one, they ask you to calculate the number of nuclei remaining in 42.8 seconds. Okay, how is it? Uh, so it's quite simple for the second question and second part. Okay. By using the equation of n equals to n not exponent negative lambda t, alright, n not given already, we need to find n lambda calculated just now before, and t given to. Uh, substitute all the values. Okay, then you will get the answer directly, where the answer getting out is 1.59 exponent 9 nucleus. Okay, uh, so n not given already. In the question lambda calculated before in the first part okay t given already in the question okay uh, so it's quite easy isn't it uh, so for this chapter normally we just use the equation directly but we need to know what we have is given in the question is it a a not n and not or t half or lambda and remember lambda here is not the wavelength eh? lambda representing the decay constant okay remember that 